Hi everyone, welcome to the Stress Strain Lab instructional video. I'm Ronald Hoffer and I'm going to walk you through the procedures that you're going to be carrying out in the lab. Let's begin with part one. At each home station, you will find a rubber tie down, a tape measure, a digital caliper, a luggage scale, and some painter's tape. Begin by marking the thin main section of the rubber tie down with painter's tape. Lay the tie down flat on the desk and use the tape measure to measure the length between the inside edges of the painter's tape. To measure the width and thickness of the rubber tie down, use the digital caliper. Start by turning on the caliper, closing the jaws, and then pressing the zero button. Now it's calibrated. Open the jaws of the caliper and close them about the width of the rubber tie down. Don't squeeze so tightly that you compress the rubber as this will distort your results. To measure the thickness, same thing. Remember to record your measurements on your answer sheets. Use the luggage scale to apply a 6 kilogram load to the rubber tie down. While the rubber tie down is under the 6 kilogram load, measure the length, width and thickness again. Remember to record these measurements in your answer sheets. Remember to turn off the digital caliper when you are done this part of the lab. Now I'm going to show you how to do part two of the procedure. At each stress strain station, you'll find a stress strain apparatus, a netbook computer, a digital caliper, a wrench, and the stress strain apparatus instruction booklet. To begin part two of the procedure, obtain a tensile coupon like this from your lab instructor for your group. You want to measure the length, width, and thickness of the sample. To do this, use the digital caliper. First, turn on the caliper, then close the jaws, then press the zero button. Now it's calibrated. To measure the length of the coupon, use the thumb wheel on the caliper to slide the jaws open. Measure along the thin main section of the coupon. To measure the width of the caliper, of the tensile coupon, close the jaws so that they just hold the tensile coupon in place. Do not close the jaws so tightly that they bend the tensile coupon. To measure the thickness, same thing. Don't forget to record these measurements in the table on your answer sheets. Open the file on your desktop called MSC 101 Stress Strain Lab Precalibrated. Immediately, save your activity as specified in the Stress Strain Apparatus Instruction Manual. Prepare the stress function by opening the calculator window and selecting stress equals force over area from the drop down menu. Enter the cross sectional area of your coupon in square millimeters and click accept to complete the calculation. To prepare the strain function, select strain equals displacement over length from the same drop down menu. Enter the length of your coupon, click the accept button and then close the calculator window. To install the coupon in the apparatus, first move the lever arm so that it contacts the force sensor. Then loosen the clips by turning the nuts counterclockwise. Now slide the coupon underneath the clips. Ensuring that the lever arm is still in contact with the force sensor, adjust the crank so that the coupon has just a little bit of wiggle room along its axis.
tighten the clips onto the coupon. Ensure that the coupon and the clips remain completely straight. Use the wrench to complete the tightening. Do not tighten the nuts so much, however, that you strip the threads. Now, turn the crank counterclockwise so that the lever arm can be pushed against the starting post without any tension remaining in the coupon. Finally, before you begin your test, press the zero button on the force sensor. Begin recording data by clicking the start button in the upper left corner of your screen. Begin to turn the crank slowly clockwise. Be careful not to touch the rubber drive belt at any time because this will distort your results. Go extra slowly as the lever arm begins to contact the force sensor. The computer does not begin recording data until the force sensor has reached 1% of its maximum force. So go slowly as you approach this threshold. Once you exceed 2 or 3% of the maximum force, you can turn the crank more quickly. Turn the crank smoothly until either the sample fails or the apparatus cannot turn anymore. Once your sample has failed or the apparatus cannot move any further, click the stop button in the upper left corner of your screen. To analyze your data, use the Zoom Select tool to zoom in on your graph. Simply click and drag to draw a box around your graph. To find the modulus, click and drag with the cursor to place a box around the linear portion of the graph. Ensure that you do not include any rough part near the beginning of the graph, and ensure that your selected data stops short of the yield point. Click on the Fit button to reveal a drop-down menu and select Linear Fit. The slope of the line is your elastic modulus. Now, obtain your yield stress, your ultimate tensile stress, and your failure stress visually from the graph. Remember to use the 0.2% strain offset rule when finding the yield stress. Now, save your activity and exit the software. To remove your sample from the apparatus, use the wrench to gently loosen off the nuts. Obtain an envelope from your lab instructor and label it as shown here. Place all the pieces of your tensile coupon into the envelope, seal it, and give it to your lab instructor. Thanks for watching everyone, and all the best with your labs.